Hey guys, so today we're going to look at how to calculate mean absolute deviation. So data can be described by its variability, which refers to the IQR, which stands for interquartile range, and MAD, which stands for mean absolute deviation. So the MAD value is a way to measure the spread of the data in relation to the mean. MAD close to zero means that the data is close to the mean. The interquartile range, which we will focus on tomorrow, we're not going to look at that today, but the interquartile range is a way to measure the spread of data around the median. A small interquartile range means the data is close to the median. So the word variability is the term that describes how far the data is away from the mean or the median. So to calculate mean absolute deviation, you are going to find the mean. So we're going to find the average. You're going to find the difference of each piece of data from the mean. You're going to take the absolute value, and then you're going to find the average of the absolute deviation. And it sounds like a lot of steps, but I'm going to walk you through an example in a second. All right, we're going to go ahead and calculate the MAD value for this table. So the first column just tells us how many families were surveyed, and seven families were surveyed. The second column tells us the number of family members, and we're going to go ahead and find the average number of members in each family. So when you add all of these up, you should get 24, and we're going to divide it by 7, and that's going to give us 3.4. All right, now we need to figure out the deviation from the mean, and deviation just means like how far off you are. So we're going to go ahead and take each one of these numbers in the second column and subtract the mean from it. All right, once we have all of these numbers, the absolute deviation means that the number cannot be negative. We can't have a negative value for our mean. So I'm simply just going to take away the negative sign from these numbers. All right, once you do that, now you're going to find the mean of these numbers. So you're going to add all these up, and you're going to divide by 7 again. So when you add all of these up, you should get 9.4 divided by 7, and that's going to give us 1.3 for our MAD value. So 1.3 would be the mean absolute deviation. All right, data can be displayed visually in order to compare the center and variability. Symmetrical data is displayed as a dot plot. All right, the situation says two different classes were asked how many minutes each student traveled to school in the mornings. 
We're going to use the data below to create a dot plot and answer the questions. So room 434 says 5, so I'm going to put a dot on 5. 7, 8, 8, 4, 4, 7, 5, 4, 7. All right, plot the next one and then press play to move on. Question two says, what observations can you make about each data set? So by looking at the graph, I can see that room 425 has a peak at five minutes, meaning that it goes up much higher than the rest. And then room 434 is more condensed, meaning that all the data is close together. And one of them doesn't have a much higher amount than the other. Question three says determine the measure of center in each data set, which means that we are gonna go ahead and calculate the mean. So pause the video. Calculate the mean of room 434 and 425, and then press play to move on. All right, so room 434 has a mean of 5.9, and room 425 has a mean of 5. All right, and question four says, what is the difference between the center for room 425 and room 434? So we're just going to subtract the two. So 5.9 minus 5 is going to give us 0 0.9 for our difference. All right, so I want you to go ahead and calculate the mad value for each one of these tables. It might help you if you arrange the numbers from least to greatest, since several of these numbers are the same. It means that when you're subtracting, it's gonna be the same, and it'll save you some time in the long run. Remember, room 434 had an average of 5.9. And room 425 had an average of 5. So go ahead and pause the video, try to calculate the MAD value for each table, and then press play to see if you get the correct answer. So for the first one, you should have gotten a MAD value of 1.5, and the second one, you should have gotten a MAD value of 0 0.8. In the second one, remember that even though you add zero and zero doesn't really affect anything when you add it, you have to count it as a number when you're dividing it. So you're dividing by 10 here because you're still considering 10 numbers, even though you don't need to add the zeros when you're adding them all up. That's not going to change anything. All right, if you are unsure or you didn't get something correct here, raise your hand and I can come help you or use my work to try to figure out what you did wrong. Question six says, what observations can you make about the MAD value of each classroom? So room 434 had a MAD value of 1.5 and room 425 had a MAD value of 0 0.8. So the closer your MAD value is to zero means the less variability you have. It tells you that each data point is close to the mean. So room 425 has less variability than room 434, meaning the data is more compact and it's not as spread out. And, and question seven, how is the difference in centers related to the variability of each classroom? So this would be the difference in mean, and we calculated this earlier, and that was 0 0.9. And that is really close to the MAD value for room 425. 